Over the years, our family's had a share of health problems. So prescriptions are a part of our life. Before we went to the big box store. We both thought it would help us save. But with the long lines and impersonal service, filling prescriptions became a chore. That's when a friend recommended DNH. Now Tristan knows our prescriptions. Brenda always helps us find the right vitamins. And after Dad's fall, Monica's been a real expert with all our home medical needs, all without the lines. Trust and service. That's our DNH. Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on Thursday, October the 29th. Good to have you with us. I've, I've got uh, Joan Stack with us from the Historical Society. Welcome, Hello. Joan. Yeah, here's one lady that I I love having on because you are so knowledgeable <laughs> with whatever subject you come out with. I mean, you know what you're talking about. Well, basically what we try to do at the Historical Society, or at least what I try to do with the art collection, is try to understand how art helps us understand history. Yeah. And in lots of different ways. So I have to study up on a lot of different things. Yeah. When we so today, today we're talking about... We are talking about a lithograph that was recently acquired by the State Historical Society of Missouri. It's a lithograph after George Caleb Bingham that was produced during his lifetime in 1852, and it's of a very iconic and famous uh, painting by George Caleb Bingham, uh, Daniel Boone immigrating into the West. Now you have now reproductions of every one of his uh, painting? Of his life, well, during Bingham's lifetime, the way he made himself famous was to create prints after his work. He, of course, wouldn't actually make the prints. He would have other artists do that. But he supervised and chose the images. And uh, there are only eight of these, and we have an impression of all eight. This was the last one we didn't have. And now, now you have it. Now, if you would like to see what we're talking about, and Joan will paint a picture with words, you're listening on the radio. <laughs> But well, we got a picture of it, and if you'd like to see it, simply go to kbia.org and watch this vodcast. Go ahead, Joan. Now we yeah. Got well, first of all, I want to encourage you to come to the State Historical <laughs> Society, and we are located on the ground floor of Ellis Library with entrances on Hitt Street and Lowry Mall. So you'll see the real thing uh, there. And the image is, you've probably seen it before. It's often on the cover of books. It shows Daniel Boone kind of staring out at you as he, with a train of people behind him, steps <laughs> into the wilderness. And, and he... Um, and behind him on horseback is Rebecca Boone, and next to him is Colonel Calloway, and Calloway County is named after him. So many people who actually were involved in the settlement, the European-American settlement of the West, and eventually of Missouri. Uh, Daniel Boone's son, Nathan, was uh, an early settler right here in mid-Missouri. So what is very interesting about this, and Paul and I were talking about this earlier, is that the image is a typical image in many respects in that it celebrates uh, colonialization. It celebrates European Americans coming in to the western part of the United States and settling. And in fact, it celebrates the idea that women had to be involved in there. So Rebecca Boone is there on horseback. And but she looks so solemn. I know. It's, she's got this she, she kind of... She looks very solemn. In fact, everybody in this picture doesn't look too happy. No, it's, it is a very strange picture. And what I think is intriguing about it, any time a figure in a picture looks out at you, they make a psychological contact with you. And uh, Rebecca Boone and Daniel Boone and Colonel Calloway are all looking at us. Mm -hmm. And so they are... They are showing us a kind of a, a this solemn, intrepid, determined stare, but they're not terribly happy. It does look like a perhaps somewhat dangerous uh, landscape that they're going into, which may explain their stare. But also, what I find very intriguing about this picture is though it makes the typical European-American argument that the uh, people who, who colonized this part of the world were heroic, there is this little element that subverts that idea, which is that as a viewer, we are placed in the land that's about to be colonized. So in some ways, we take the position of a Native American who's watching this uh, powerful, intrepid uh, figure coming in to his or her land. So, right. So that is, it, it, the picture, of course, Bingham may not have thought this out uh, with great depth. But, but when you look at it, when you look at it, 
That's what you see. That's what you see. So the picture itself, sometimes artists uh, communicate subconsciously and in ways that maybe they can't talk like an art historian about them, but they insert little, little uh, ambivalences into their pictures, right. and especially the great artists. That's what makes an artist great, I think. If their pictures shouldn't be easy to understand. They're not propaganda. They have multiple levels. And that's what I think we're seeing here. Now, when we look at this picture, these are really not the likenesses of these, of these people. No, because these people lived, oh, uh, probably about 75 years before uh, Bingham is painting this picture. In, uh, in about 1850, he painted the original version. If you want to see the original painting, it's at Washington University in their art gallery there. So yes, he's imagining uh, their what faces. What they look like, yes. And so perhaps in some ways he's giving them this intensity uh, to make them characters that you really engage with. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's, it, it is very powerful. And you know, when you look at a picture like this, a painting like this, it's almost as if you are transported back in time. That's right. And you can let yourself go. You can put yourself in that time frame and imagine what it was really like. We tend to romanticize uh, that era. Yeah. But when you think about it, that's a hard life. Yeah. That was a really hard life. And you're moving into territory that other people, that the Indians had, and the white man's taking it away from them. Yeah, and and so you are forced to kind of confront that that idea. You'll notice that most of the men have guns in this picture, have rifles, and so the violence that's inherent in conquering other people's land is conquering or taking taking away is other people's land. represented. Yes. Though interestingly, he doesn't show an image of an aggressive Native American, which some of the other images produced in that period did. So he's not. Uh, not rationalizing the idea of taking the land by showing a dangerous uh, Indian trying to attack people, which uh, other people did. A very common picture at the time were the, the daughters of Daniel Boone being kidnapped by Indians. So that rationalizes the idea that we can, we can then fight them because yes, they did bad yes. things. But they wouldn't be doing the kidnapping if we weren't <laughs> trying to take their land. Well, that's right. But what I think is interesting about this picture is it does not show us violent right. Native Americans. Right. So we we are again in the place of those Amer Native Americans, and we feel the um, the aggression that that accompanies uh, colonization. So it's uh, it's a picture with some ambivalent uh, aspects to it. Joan, you are good. <laughs> <laughs> you are good, Joan Stack from the Historical Society. And as my voice was going out, you kept talking. <laughs> You're a good bro. Oh, You're a good guest to have. If people want more information or they want to come down, what do they do? Well, I think uh, the best thing to do is just come and see it because it, you can't, uh, you can't just call. Right. You can always so, visit our website. But our, we are located in the ground floor of Ellis Library on the MBU campus. So okay. please come every, visit every, us. And you're, you're closed on Monday. We're closed on Monday. Just like the Louvre. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Joan Stack, thank you so much. Always thank a pleasure you. to have you here. Uh, our program directed by Travis McMillan, Reynolds Journalism Institute. Audio is Pat Akers from KBIA. Our floor director, Kevin Casson. And our assistant producer and guest coordinator, Uncle James Mauser. Drop me an email. I would love to hear from you. Something you'd like to hear or see. And uh, tomorrow, MU School of Music. We've got opera. Bye-bye.